I'm scared, my love. <laughs> hey there, I'm Sarah and this is Mary. We've been saving up for years and six months ago we finally set off to fulfill our travel dreams. But there's a catch. We have a budget. So the better we budget, the longer we get to travel. We started our travels in England, then spent three months living in the snowy French Alps. After that, we headed to Poland where we tasted delicious Polish food. And now we are exploring the beautiful country of Georgia. Subscribe to follow our journey around the world. Today is our last day at this workaway and it has rained a lot during our time here, but Today we've been blessed with a beautiful blue sky sunny day, so you know what that means. Laundry! Just kidding! <laughs> yes, washing, but mostly adventure day. So I want to take you with us and show you three really fun things to do within a stone's throw of the cabin where we've been staying. So the bike's ready and we are ready to go. On the way there, we're also going to be able to show you the village where we've been staying. We would be the worst tour guides. We've been cycling around for an hour already and we're still yet to find the entrance to this place. This sign right here is where it all went so wrong. <laughs> we thought this sign meant that we could go down this road and we would eventually get to where we're trying to get to. But we actually think that this sign signifies the viewpoint for the Sferi Fortress. Now, unfortunately, we can't get up there personally, but we can show you what it looks like from the sky thanks to our drone, and we'll give you a bit of history at the same time. It doesn't look like much, but that's because it was literally built in the year 830 AD. It used to be an important fortress for the storage of artillery, but after the year 1810, it lost its purpose and eventually fell into ruins. So what are we actually looking at here? There are three construction levels in the fortress walls. The early medieval level built of semi-smooth small blocks, the high medieval level built of large smooth blocks, and the late medieval level, a mixture of cobblestones and flat stones. Georgia is very rich in history, you just need to know where to look. So that's our first stop for the day done. It's time to head back to the cabin, grab some equipment, and then head on out to our next spot for the day. Now don't worry, we know exactly where the entrance to this next place is. Don't we look pretty legit? <laughs> so this next place that we're going to, we literally need climbing gear to get there. So you may have noticed that we actually have a shadow. This little guy is a stray dog that has literally adopted us because we've been giving him some food. He literally looked like he was starving. So we've been giving him some food. And since about Friday, it's now Wednesday. Since Friday, he's been living at the cabin. He never leaves. And anytime we go anywhere, he's right there with us. <laughs> Wow, that is where we need to get to right over there. And it looks to be about an 80 meter drop straight down. So we need to be very, very careful when making our traverse around the rock.
made it. So it's literally only a climb of about two or three meters, but the risks with this one is just so high that you need to make sure that all your safety procedures are in check before attempting this little climb. But we made it to a cathedral that has literally been carved into a cliff face. research online but I actually struggled to find information about this cathedral in particular. What I did notice though is that there are so many monasteries and cathedrals all over Georgia in strange and unusual places and that's due to the very turbulent history that Georgia has had and how they've literally been fighting in wars since like 800 BC in order to keep their religion, their culture and their language. So this cathedral is just an example of the lengths that Georgians had to go to to try and keep their religion. So that was a really, really cool experience and something totally unique to us. Fun fact, I actually came here the other day with a couple of friends that we made back in camp. And one of the guys, hey Joe, he brought his ukulele along with him and he treated us to some music. spot for the day and this is something we've been looking forward to all day. We mentioned in previous videos that this adventure camp that we're staying at has been working on some pretty cool projects. Now unfortunately we won't be able to climb it today but we just had to tell you all about it. They recently finished working on the very first Via Ferrata in Georgia. A Via Ferrata is a climbing route that employs steel cables, rungs or ladders which are fixed to the rock that allow you to climb without needing any previous rock climbing experience. Now don't worry, you clip your harness into these fixings which helps to keep you safe. This type of climbing route opens up climbing opportunities for amateur climbers where routes would have otherwise been too dangerous or risky. We had the opportunity to climb on the one section and actually made a YouTube short about it. We feel pretty stoked to have been here for its first public opening. One thing that we are so grateful to be taking away from this workaway is that we've learned how to rock climb here. So basically that means we've learned how to tie the right knots, how to use the equipment correctly, and Marek's even confident to climb lead, which basically means that he takes the rope to the top of the rock for us to then climb securely afterwards. Let's give you a quick demonstration. All right, so to start off with, we obviously have our harness and this is what's going to keep us safe if we fall off the rock. Over here we have things called quick draws and this is what's going to help me to lead climb all the way up the rock face. This is the climbing knot and to make sure that you've done it correctly, you should have three parallel lines. So you've got one line, you've got two lines and you've got three lines over there and this keeps you in place should anything go wrong. And now for the most uncomfortable part of the whole experience, these bad boys right here, these are rock climbing shoes. And as you can see, they are definitely as comfortable as they look, but they definitely give you the best chance of making it securely and properly up a rock face. So America and I are both kitted out now. This is a belay, which is also attached. The rope is obviously attached to Marek as well. And I'll be using this to keep Marek secure while he climbs up the rock. 
Marek, your life is in my hands. Do you trust me? <laughs> here at the top. Now this is the view from the top. And now we start the process of descending all the way down there. Ready? So climbing lead is not nearly as dangerous as what it sounds. You actually still are attached to anchor bolts all the way up, but the only difference between climbing lead and climbing top rope, so basically top rope is when the rope is already attached to the top, is that when you're climbing lead, you if you do fall, you fall as far as what your lower connecting bolt is. Whereas if you're climbing top rope, again, that's the one climbing through with the rope on top, you basically fall a few like centimeters really. So both of them are pretty safe, but climbing lead, you just do fall a little bit further if something does go wrong. Climbing shoes are literally the worst. I literally got to a point where I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't like think about climbing up because each step was just agony. Even with the shoes off, it's so sore. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Unfortunately, this workway has actually been a bit of a letdown for us and the reason for that is because the way it was advertised made it sound like we would be doing a whole lot more adventurous activities and possibly different kinds of work and the weather on top of that was freezing cold and raining for a lot of the time that we were here so that really didn't help but it was a very cool experience in that we actually got to experience and see rural georgia which was very eye-opening for us and interesting and overall it's really not a bad work away and it's a very cool place like an adventurous paradise honestly but i think we just came at the wrong time and the camp wasn't quite open yet so a number of factors played into it and it wasn't quite what we were hoping for but anyways <laughs> All of that aside, thank you so much for joining us for this little adventure through this region. We feel very happy uh, going off tomorrow, actually having shown you around where we've been staying for almost the past month. So smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and if you thought that we we're pretty brave trying out these different activities, <laughs> let us know in the comments down below if you'd be willing to try any of these activities and of course subscribe so that you can join in for the rest of our Georgian adventures as well as all of the other countries we plan on visiting in the future. And we'll see you guys back this coming Tuesday.